Back at Buckingham Palace, I met up with Deputy Comptroller of the Royal Household, Jonathan Spencer. So if I tried to walk out on the balcony, what would happen? Would you all kill me? I think the police down below might have something to say. <laughs> and you might be removed quite quickly. Why is it reserved for just members of the family? Because it's the head of state's residence, it's the Queen's official residence, and that balcony has, by tradition, become that point where the nation can see the Queen at the end of an event that has been particularly historical. Nobody knows that balcony better than the Queen. It's where Elizabeth stood in 1947 with her new husband, Prince Philip. Their union, eight years in the making, was one that might never have taken place without the help of a savvy matchmaker named Mountbatten. It's 1939 and Elizabeth, the heir to the throne, was just 13. Prince Philip of Greece was an 18-year-old cadet in the British Royal Navy. They met several times during the war when she was still a teenager. And I think it's clear that she never had eyes for anyone else. So he was quite a sort of exciting, interesting character who people didn't know a lot about. But I think she was incredibly drawn to the fact that he was this young, dashing naval officer and, and they fell in love from a very young age. I think they must have had real attraction. It must have just been bam. Philip's uncle, Louis Mountbatten, made it his personal mission to see the princess and his nephew married. But there were stormy seas ahead. First, Philip was off to fight in World War II. Prince Philip uh, was very much a naval officer. He'd had a very good war. He'd been mentioned in dispatches. He was a brave sailor. And over the course of the next few years, they, they exchanged letters, they wrote to each other regularly. Matt Batten floated the idea of Philip becoming Elizabeth's suitor. Her father, King George, denied that request. He wasn't ready to give his daughter away. Buckingham Palace and the King were not pleased about the romance between Prince Philip of Greece and uh, Princess Elizabeth. Uh, there was the political aspect. Greece was a very dodgy country. It had been Nazi-occupated, Nazi-collaborated. Four of Philip's brothers-in-law had fought for the Nazis during the war. Her family was slightly alarmed, but much more alarmed were the court, who thought, penniless Greek prince. Oh, no, thank you. Mountbatten decided the best course of action was to try and make Prince Philip a naturalized British citizen. And while the British government delayed that request, no one could stop the relationship from moving forward. It took about a year, but the Queen was determined, the future Queen. And she basically said to her father, look, I'm 21 now. This is the man I love. I am devoted to him. I want to marry him. When Philip proposed, the princess accepted. The King and Queen persuaded her to wait to announce the engagement until 1947, after they had been on a, the family had been on a long tour of South Africa. By the time the family returned from that trip, Philip's citizenship paperwork had come through. The engagement was made public, and after eight years, the couple finally wed. Lady Pamela Hicks is Philip's well, cousin was and was a bridesmaid at the wedding. This, so and then you wore this on a, your head? That we wore those on our heads. So it's had a little bit of tender loving care at the palace, I think. I guess you wouldn't put this on, would no, you? No, guess right. <laughs> Absolutely got it in one. I think Philip must have really loved her to give up his naval career, to give up his independence, to give up, you know, the ladies, you know, to marry the queen, because he knew that one day she would be queen. He knew Elizabeth would become queen, but didn't realize just how soon. My grandfather was, um, you know, had a very successful career in the, in the military or in the Navy. He, um, he gave it all up to, to, to do his job, and to be there to support the queen. It must have been quite difficult for him being in the sort of shadows and, and being the support, but, um, he does it fantastically well. He's never complained, and uh, well, he has complained a little bit, but not not sort of too openly. And it's obvious from 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 all of us, and it should be obvious to, to everybody else that sees it going on, is the fact that without him, you know, she she would be slightly lost. I think. For Elizabeth, there was no conflict between love and duty, but she did face that conflict with her younger sister, Princess Margaret. The two share the fact that both fell in love with dashing war heroes. But that's where the similarities end. 
there would be no fairy tale ending for Margaret. When you look at Margaret, she was such a beauty. She was so effervescent. She fell madly in love. It was an all-consuming, passionate love. When Princess Margaret in the early 1950s fell in love with Peter Townsend, who was an equerry in the household, a very nice young man, but who had been divorced, it caused a huge scandal and crisis. Because the Queen is the head of the Church of England, the notion that her sister would be marrying a divorced man was simply unacceptable. Senior politicians were also against the marriage. The young queen found herself in a catch-22. I think the queen was put in an impossible situation. She had to give her permission in order for Margaret to marry Peter Townsend. And can you imagine telling a family member you can't marry the love of your life? Margaret was left with two options. She could still marry Townsend, but would need to relinquish her royal position and allowance or she could end the relationship. And Princess Margaret made the decision that it was too difficult. And she, uh, she wrote in a letter to one of her friends that she and Peter Townsend had come to the decision in, together at the same instant that this cannot happen. Years later, Margaret did get married to society photographer Tony Armstrong Jones. And the story goes that she announced her engagement to him a day or so after she found out that Peter Townsend was going to be marrying a young Belgian girl. The marriage was marred by infidelity, alcohol, and yes, the D word. That marriage ended in divorce in the 1970s. The dilemma, duty versus desire, was far from over. And with a new generation of royal romances on the horizon, Margaret's story will soon seem tame by comparison.